Hello and welcome to part two of our layout build phase four, building a control panel and doing the wiring. Take a look. Once each piece of Lexan was fitted to each of the control panels, I then went to my computer and created a mirror image of the track diagram that I want on each panel. Once they were printed out, I was able to tape them to the back side of each piece of Lexan. Once the printout of the mirror image has been taped to the Lexan, I can now use this as a template. I used some 1 8 inch wide automotive pinstriping and began laying out the track diagram on the Lexan. Once the pinstriping is completed, this is what the Lexan looks like with the pinstriping on the back side of the Lexan. I proceeded with the same process of the pinstriping on each of the other two panels. And here's what they end up looking like once they're in place. Chuck also had some special stickers made up of the emblem of the name of his layout so that we could add those to the panels as well. I should also note that the adhesive on these stickers is on the front of the sticker so that they can be applied to the back side of the Lexan. Once the pinstriping was completed and the stickers were added to each panel, I then turned them over to the back side and using some maroon colored paint, we spray painted the pinstriping side of the Lexan. And now you can see what they look like once that part has been completed. Once the maroon colored paint was completely dry, I re then removed all of the pinstriping from the back of the panel. In this particular case, once the striping was removed, I used some black spray paint and painted over where the, that where the pinstriping was to begin with, and this is the end result. With the other two panels, I had a little bit of extra work to do. In these cases, such as where the yellow stripe is at, I removed the pinstriping for only that area only. Then I sprayed it with the yellow paint. Once that was dry, I did the same thing where the blue line is at. I only removed the striping where that's at. Once that was dried, then I was able to remove the rest of the pinstriping and spray it all black. And here's the end result of all three panels. If you recall from the computer image of the turntable panel. In the upper right hand corner you can see the controller for the turntable. Since the turntable has not been purchased as of yet, we'll have to add this later on, but at least I've made room for it and we can always add this at a later date. Once all the painting was completely dry, it is now time to turn our attention to drilling some holes. I used my drill press and some brand new drill bits. Do not use used worn out drill bits to drill these holes or you do nothing more than make a mess. Once the holes were finally drilled, it's time to now start mounting the hardware of all the toggle switches and the chrome bezels for all of the LEDs. Well, it's now time to turn our attention to the wiring. As you can see, even for this small panel, 
there's still quite a few wires that need to be attached. It's not too bad and I pre-planned everything that I wanted to do and how everything needed to be wired up which facilitated in the easement of making this process a lot easier. Once the internal wiring was completed it was a simple matter of making all the connections to the terminal strips that would be mounted underneath the layout. I continued with the other small panel and was able to get it done fairly quickly. And actually by planning out all of your wiring and how things need to be hooked up facilitates the easement in doing this part of the project. When it came to wiring up the large panel for the turntable, as you can see there was quite a number of wires that needed to be hooked up. This was very painstakingly done and took me three days just to get this pre-wiring done, but I'm glad it's over with. On the turntable panel alone, there was 56 wires coming out that needed to be connected up. So that's quite a bit of soldering to have to do. Okay, here I'm going to demonstrate how I take and I get these things wired up. As you can see here from all this conglomeration here, kind of move the camera here a little bit where you can see it a little bit better. I've got all kinds of wires coming in and out of here that still need to be connected up. Uh, I've got all these cables here then all of these cables all need to be connected to the uh, terminal strips that will be on the back side of the control panels. <clears throat> this particular panel that I'm working on now is the most involved panel of all uh, of the three that I'm working on uh, for my friend's uh, layout. <clears throat> but uh, just to show yeah, I'm not going to go through all of this. I mean, all of this much is already done. I just thought that for the last uh, uh, group of LEDs here and so on, I'd show how things are getting wired up here. First off, I've got uh, two LEDs here. Each one of these LEDs, one is green and one is red. And, uh, and even though they look clear, when you power them up, they do look, you know, they do give out a red and a green glow to them. The only way that I can tell the difference between them is that the, you'll notice that the length of the wires here, I don't know how well you can maybe see that, you know, these wires here and here, one set of wires is longer than the other. The green one is always the longer one. So that helps uh, keeping things straight when I go to insert the LEDs into the sockets on here. I also have, I've already, uh, uh, yeah, I also have a uh, toggle switch here separate from these here that I've got rigged up that I use for doing some wiring. <clears throat> I've got this red and black wire here. This is going to be my 12 volt DC power coming in. Now this wiring that I'm showing you is going to be for uh, wiring up a tortoise switch machine instead of using the uh, the Z stuff switch machines uh, my friend Chuck is going to be using the tortoise switch machines which are really nice. Um, these things have with all of these contacts uh, that are on here. Uh, you only need two of them to operate the switch machine, but the other contacts are for two built-in single pole double throw relays that you can use for all kinds of different applications, uh, whether it be for possibly an accessory or for you know signals or anything like that. But anyways, the tortoise switch machines is what this wiring method has to deal with. So 
So I've got this toggle switch, like I said, that I had pre-wired. The red and the black wire here is for my 12 volt DC power coming in. And you also notice, I don't know how well you might be able to see that, I've got a black wire that jumpers diagonally across the terminals on here. I also have a red wire that is connected diagonally across of it. This is to create a reversing switch. Now the blue and the white wire is my output voltage. And what this does is by having these jumpers going crosswise on here that as I throw the toggle switch, it reverses the polarity of the power going out to the tortoise machines. And that is what uh, changes the switch machine, is the polarity of the wiring going to it. <clears throat> so in this particular case, this is what I'm using at the moment, you know, as, as, a, uh, as a test fixture uh, that I had made up to be able to test to make sure that I had everything that I'm going to be doing is wired up correctly. Uh, first off, let me talk about the wire that I'm using. I've got this cable here that has eight wires in it. And eight, all eight wires are a different color. you got a yellow and a green, a red and a black, blue and white, and brown and orange. Now, these are shown being twisted. Now, I twisted these up like this just to keep them in twisted pairs for simplicity's sake to make it easier to handle the wires and keep things straight. Uh, two of these wires in this particular cable are going to be for my power input uh, for all of this conglomeration of wiring that's over here for the... Um, or, yeah, for, yeah, for over here for all of the tortoise machines on the layout. I've already pre-wired two other sets of LEDs that I have connected. Hey, like here's my blue and white wire and here's my red and green LEDs that I have. I will be posting uh, in a little bit here a diagram showing the wiring on how these things get hooked up. But at the moment with this, this is already pre-assembled, shall we say. All I need to do now is take these two connections here and connect, solder those to the two contacts on the toggle switches and then everything, and then plug the LEDs into their appropriate sockets and we'll be all set to go. So that's set. These two sets are done. I've got one more set that I need to do. And on these two LEDs, I've already pre-stripped the wires back on each of these. Now what I do is I take the red wire and I connect it together with the black wire of the other LED. Because with LEDs, if the polarity is backwards, the LED will not light, but it does not hurt the LED. And then I take the other two wires and I connect them together. Just For the moment, I'm just giving them a twist to make sure that they stay together. So now that I've got that, now I have my green and yellow wire here that I'm using out of the eight wires that I need to connect these two. Now, I've got a, my own method of how I keep things straight um, with the eight wires that are in these cables. Uh, I always connect them up with black, red, green, yellow, blue, white, brown, orange. And I follow that same pattern all the time. That way, when I go to connect each of these cables to the terminal strips, it makes it much easier for me to know exactly what order everything needs to be attached to the terminal strip. Always start with black, red, green, yellow, blue, white, brown, orange. And it keeps things simple. So with the one set, I'm starting off with black and red. That's my first pair. Now, granted, I understand I'm working with DC voltage. Typically, red is your hot power. Black is your ground. 
In this particular case, I'm ignoring that situation. I'm always using the first color for my positive power. So my black and red are paired together, so my black is going to be my positive power. Then the next pair is my green and yellow. So my green is the first one. What I want to do is I want to take the green LED. I want to take the hot wire. Whichever one of these two terminals has the hot wire, which is our red one, from the, the green LED, I want to connect that to my green wire in this particular case. In the other, partic in the other cases that I've already got pre-assembled here, Oops, that just came undone. Anyways, my green LED for this pair of with my blue and white wires, I've got the hot wire from the green LED is connected to my blue. And if I was doing another set with the brown and orange wires, my brown wire would always have the hot wire because that's my, my order. The first one's always the hot. Okay? So let me get this reattached here. This came undone because I let go of it. I didn't get these twisted very well. So I'm going to get these twisted up. Put just a dab of some flux on here. Grab my soldering iron, and we'll solder those together. Quick and simple as, as that. Take the other pair of wires, and they are going to get connected to my yellow. So I get those connected together. Again, I'm going to add just a tad bit of some flux on here. Not much, just doesn't take much. Grab my soldering iron and some solder and get those connected together. Now, one added thing I've been doing with these, I see I've only got one of them cut. I've been adding a little piece of. Um, heat shrink tubing because I found that now that if I just stop right here and try to solder this to the terminal on the toggle switch sometimes it comes unraveled and that becomes a royal pain in the butt so I take a piece of heat shrink tubing and place it over the three wires and I let the end, it barely, just barely fits on here. So I let the end, just enough of the end to stick out so that I can solder that to the terminal on the toggle switch. So now at this point, let's grab my little lighter here. And we'll shrink that up. And that takes care of that. And then it also it helps protect instead of having a, this massive amount of solder sticking out. This helps insulate everything as well. I need to cut another piece of uh, heat shrink tubing here. So we'll get that. And we will place this over the next grouping of wires. If I can get this on here. Like I said, it barely fits. There we go. Of course, I put my lighter away. And get that shrunk down. Now this is already prepared and ready to solder to the toggle switch. So, and once I get these last wires hooked up to the toggle switches here, 
I'll be prepared. I can then insert my LEDs into the appropriate sockets where they need to go. And that should take care of the last of this wiring other than making the connections to the terminal strips. Now I know that some people are intimidated with wiring. Uh, they find it to be a little bit complicated, but it's really not that bad. If you focus on this diagram on the left hand side where the tortoise machines are at, you will see a wiring diagram of how to wire up the toggle switches and how to make the connections to the tortoise machines. On the right hand side of this drawing you will see the other toggle switches that are used for turning on and off the track power to the spider tracks around his turntable. Now Chuck wanted to have the LEDs for these to be mounted on the bumpers of each of the spider tracks and this diagram shows the wiring on how to do all of that. For the track power, what you will notice on the double pull, double throw toggle switch, that one side of the toggle switch is being used to control the track power. The other terminals on the toggle switch are being used to turn the red and green LEDs on and off that are mounted on the ends of the bumpers of each spider track. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's been very informative and some of you may have learned something from all of this. This project has been time consuming for one. I've had several nights that uh, I've slept very well because I've been pretty tired. Uh, but at least this project is done and I believe Chuck is uh, from what he's uh, I've shared some photos with him as I've been working on this project and so far he is very pleased with the end results and I'm sure he's looking forward to me coming back down to his place and getting these things installed and you know I can't wait to see the smile on his face either so hey if you really like this video you know click on that like button smash that bell and you know get your notifications of any future videos which I'm sure there'll be a few coming along down the road so happy railroading to everybody and enjoy your day